and, and oh my goodness, don't you feel the burden? Well, Habakkuk felt this too, but listen. Verse 2 says, O Lord, how long shall I cry and you will not hear? Even cry out to you violence and you will not save. Come on, haven't you looked out recently in the streets and you've seen violence and you've seen cover up after cover up and accusation after accusation? Oh, come on. It says, Habakkuk says, why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? For plundering and violence are before me. There is strife and contention that arises. Therefore, the law is powerless and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous, therefore perverse judgment proceeds. Come on. Come on. Haven't you heard that? It, like in the name of humanity? And we need to have humanity. Don't get me wrong there. But come on, listen to me, people. Just uh, focus on me right now. Just look up here. You've got to pay attention to the signs of the time. All right? That we are willing to make our own laws. Some states and some cities say we will not obey the law of the land. We will become our own law. That's rebellion. And, and people are, 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 are catering to it and defending it. Well, where do we draw the line then? If the law has been established and, and we no longer obey that law, we create a new law, where are you going to draw the line? And then people hide it under the guise of, well, it's just humanity. We, we just, we just want to let them come in. Okay, well, let's let them come in. Well, let's let them come in by the way of the law. The law makes provision. The law makes provision for even for refugees. The law makes provision for immigrants. You can't come in. Just do it lawfully. What is wrong with that? And if you were to cry out about that, you were put down. This is the kind of stuff that Habakkuk was seeing. This is not new in the, in the realm of man. It's just a different face to it. A different time to it. Are you hearing me? Yes. You hearing me? And, and, and people excuse their lawlessness, lawlessness for, the same, uh, uh, for the sake of being uh, uh, humane. Okay? All right, so we, 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 we establish a border so we can get a control of those entering unlawfully. Please enter. Please come if you come lawfully. And if you come as a refugee, come because you want to embrace and find a new place, not because you want to come and take our place. Right. That's right. Amen? That's right. this, is, this is ridiculousness. And look, look, let me show you the insanity of it. Let me show you the insanity of it. We know that according to what I heard, there's uh, like 11 million, there's like 11 million, 12 million undocumented immigrants, right? Illegals in our country. And everyone's like, uh, you know, you, you, you can't, you got, okay. And then others say open borders, okay? Now listen to me. You want to let in 10 more million? People will say, yeah, why not? Okay, how about 20 million? If you're going to open it up, let's open it up to everybody. Everybody come. What will happen to America? What if it becomes 30 million? Oh, but it won't go that far. How do you know? What if 30 million come in? 30 million. What's going to happen to us? What if 50 million come in? Which would be like, what? What? One fifth of our population. What if 100 million people decide to cross our borders and claim rights? What happens to America? Are we so foolish not to see this? There has to be some kind of regulation, otherwise it's an overrun. That's right. And listen, you, you try to go to some of these countries, you, you try to go to some of these countries and do the same thing, they'll put you in jail. Right. And nobody's out there putting them down. Right. They're playing us because we are the land of the free, that we have this glorious symbol of freedom and liberty. Yes! But it's under the law. Without the law, there is no freedom. True. That's all I gotta say about that. You were okay at eleven million. But you you turn that into thirty million illegals. You turn it into fifty million illegals. And they don't even have jobs or whatever, you know, and, and we start giving them support, which I don't mind giving people support, but if we do it lawfully, but now we're stuck with it. Well, what's going to happen? 
And where are you going to get the funds if it, if it turns into 100 million illegal immigrants? Who's, where, do you understand? Yes. Mm -hmm. So does the people of our land. Anyhow, therefore the law is powerless in verse 4. Now come on, you're hearing that today. People are speaking against the law and defiant to the core. And so therefore they're creating their own laws. And what it, what it makes me afraid of is that was the making of the Civil War. When the South began to say, uh-uh, no, 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 we're pulling away. We want to do it our way. And thank God for Abraham Lincoln, amen, that he would not let the Union be divided, one nation under God. Amen. And thank God for President Trump, one nation under God. Yes. Come on. He's been sent for our good. But listen to this. Verse 2. Habakkuk says, I've got to go to the Lord. And listen what the Lord said. Verse 2 of 2. I mean, chapter 2 of ver and verse 2 of Habakkuk. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run with it who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Amen? Yeah. Verse 4 says, Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him. But the just shall live by his faith. We ought to have faith in God. And let me tell you something. Habakkuk saw lawlessness, powerlessness, violence in the streets, rebellion all over the place. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? But just as Habakkuk was told, so be told, God has a plan. He has raised up our president for a plan of good. I know people speak wrongly, maliciously, they malign him, they impugn him with things, they say all kinds of evil things, it's nothing new. But this, listen to me, this is not about extolling or extolling uh, our, our president, although I love our president. This is about trusting my God, and that God has raised him up for our good, to bring change. And to blessing, not just for us, not just for the church, but for the United States of America and for the rest of the world, if we just trust in the Lord right now. It does seem like there is an upheaval and whatever, but just wait on the Lord. Something good is coming. You're going to see something wonderful good come out. Efforts are being put forth for good. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I just want to encourage you with that, that good things are in store, and we're going to see the goodness of God. Yes. And the goodness of God is not just for the church, but it's for where the church lives, especially in the world where it lives. There are good things coming, and I want you to be encouraged with that. Mm -hmm. And so, in closing, God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is, good. God is good. I look to the goodness of God. I don't put my trust in man, but God uses man. I put my trust in God. And it looks like our president is also, and, the, and his right-hand man, is putting their trust in God. Mm -hmm. They are giving out ear to what the Spirit would say. They're giving ear to counsel from uh, Christian leaders to hear what the Lord would say to them. And he's hearing other voices as well, you know, to gather wisdom. Amen? Amen? And he's not afraid. He's not afraid. He's not afraid. God has made him bold, but it's for our goodness. Let's look at what he said 
during his campaign, and I was at one of those meetings because God led me there, the one that was in Hershey right before he got elected. Because they said, this is a movement, and people of God, God compelled me to go. I've never gone to any kind of, of political event. I'm not even into politics. It sounds like I am, but I'm really not. Mm -hmm. But I am into God. And God showed me, when he got, he got my attention, when he showed me many, many months before Trump even came into you know, being elected, that he was going to raise him up. And I, I was blown away. I was like, what is this? You know. But anyhow, uh, so he showed me who he was going to raise up, and not just me, he showed other prophets, okay? Because the word of the Lord says that the Lord doesn't do anything unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. Written in Amos mm -hmm. chapter 3, right? He shows his secrets to his servants, the prophets. So he revealed it to me, but I wasn't the only prophet that God revealed it to, you know, in dreams and visions. Others did too, all right? Now, you heard time and time again this was a movement, right? Well, God compelled me to go to this thing in Hersey. And I didn't go there because I was a, into a political movement. I went there because I wanted to see what God was doing. And when I sat in the midst of that assembly, I am telling you, he came out and said it again. This is not about him. Look at him. He's not taking any credit for anything. He said, this is about us. See, God's for us, not against yes. us. It's about a movement. And people have to recognize, it's a movement of God. It's a movement for mankind. There's a movement happening for us all. Not just for us, but it's good news for the rest of the world. Amen? Mm -hmm. For those that will embrace it. I went and beheld this movement, and it was glorious. I like wept like a baby when I was in this place packed to the hill, to, I mean, packed to the rafters with people. But it wasn't just that. It was the presence of God in that place. And I am looking to see what God is going to do through his servant that he raised up. I put my trust in God, and I will trust that he will use that servant to bring good to the church, to the land, and to the rest of the world. Amen? If you heard this message, I pray it's a blessing to you. It's good news from heaven. If you don't yet belong to Jesus, join now by believing and receiving him as your Lord and Savior, and get this good gift of the Holy Spirit. I bless you. Receive him now, and you will become born again. Make sure you find a good church then, so you can go have fellowship and grow in your new faith. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah.